Welcome back everyone to another video. Today we are going to talk about a species of snake that has almost all but disappeared from the American marketplace and even somewhat in Europe, becoming very, very difficult to find. Want to get into it a little bit, you guys. This is not going to be a master class video because I personally have not bred them yet, so I feel like I don't have the authority to actually speak about that. We are going to change that though. We have some animals coming and we are expanding our project. But anyway, you guys, let's get into it. Today we are going to talk about Toxicodryas blandingi. Now this was in the genus Boiga. It has been bouncing back and forth for a number of years and it could be Boiga next week for all I know. But anyway, this is a rear fang snake and it is among one of the biggest, if you consider it still a Boiga. I do. I feel like this is just a rear fang boiga. The scalation is the same. It just happens to come from a different continent, not from Southeast Asia. So I have one big female here. Back about seven years ago, some babies came over captive bred from Europe and I have one big, big female. She is about seven years old now and she's just about probably nine feet i'm not sure i don't take her out and handle her very much this species is said to be actually quite toxic and we're going to get into that as well so i'm going to start by taking this girl out and i'm going to use the hook i don't like pressing my luck with her definitely not interested in getting bit I have her in one of the four foot uh, animal plastics cages here and during the day she is in her hide. She's pretty cool, she's pretty easy going, but again I try to be very careful with her and we will talk about the reasons why here in just a little bit. So let me gently take her out. Now, females are usually a lighter color and males are usually very, very dark. I don't have any males here right now, but that is going to change in the next about three or four weeks. So this is Toxocodryas blandingi. These guys occur in Western Africa. Now, she's pretty mellow. These guys have a crazy threat display they will gape and they will strike it is said that a lot of times that they will actually bluff strike and intentionally miss their target which is good for me i guess but i don't press my luck this female is amazing and she is ready to breed and she has never been with a male and we are going to change that if you look down her back, I'm going to concentrate on her head and you guys can look at her dorsal, that long line of very, very big scales running down her back. That is exactly like what all Boiga species are known for. Their scalation is a bit unique like that and she is no different. So an amazing animal, you guys. I'm going to put her back and I'm going to talk a little bit about stuff because it's kind of difficult for me to talk and concentrate on this animal at the same time. Oh, there goes, there goes the gape. That is exactly what I'm talking about. And that was my fault because I kind of tapped her as I was turning to put her back in the cage. So let me see if I can get her to go back without biting my hand. Okay, there we go. Nice and gentle. And you guys, be super careful around stuff like this. This animal actually is said to be a, a bit dangerous. Let's talk about the rear fang nature, right? So basically what it is is that rear fang snakes, Boiga included, hognose snakes, there's so many different species of rear fang snakes. They have an enlarged tooth or teeth on the top jaw usually centered around the eye. Sometimes the teeth are positioned a little bit further back, sometimes a little bit forward of the eye. So basically what it means is, is that they have a venom gland that does secrete a toxin of some sort 
of different components in that, but they don't have a good delivery system because the venom gland doesn't feed into that tooth like a front fang venomous snake. Those teeth oftentimes are grooved, but all that means is that the snake has to bite you, it has to chew, and through that groove, the saliva kind of makes its way down into the wound that they're creating by chewing. And that is how you can potentially be envenomated by a rear fang snake. You could get bit by a rear fang snake and have some sort of reaction to the, to the toxin in the saliva. But really, generally speaking, the delivery system is very inefficient. Now, the thing that's different about these, and I've done some research and I'm not an expert in venom, but they said that the toxin produced by blanding eye is a neurotoxin and it is almost comparable in strength to that of a crate of Bungaris. So it is something you have to be very careful about. I am going to feed this snake in a little bit in this video and I'm gonna show you guys the difference. When I offer food to other Boiga, all they do is just basically bite it and then they just start to swallow it and it's not that big a deal. For some reason, and I don't know if it's unique just to this particular animal, but when this snake grabs food, you can see it really biting down and you don't want that to be your hand. It's gonna be very difficult to get uh, unlodged off of your finger or your hand or your arm or whatever it may be. So that is kind of what's going on with these. I wanted to explain the rear fang thing a little bit more. I've explained it so many times in my videos, but with social media, all the big name YouTubers seem to be kind of creeping in on, on my Boiga market, right? And they're really good because you can throw the word venomous on the thumbnail, you can dupe your audience, you can fool everybody by making them think that all these snakes are super, super dangerous, which really isn't necessarily true they gape they do the threat displays some youtubers love being bit on camera it's great for views but it basically is just spreading misinformation so all i'm doing is sharing with you guys the absolute truth and facts so i'm gonna feed her i'm gonna try to feed her hopefully she'll take food So if you, if you see her, she is really biting down, just giving it a lot of pressure. And I feel like if that's your hand, it is not going to be a good thing. Now I feed these blanding eye, I give them mixed diet between birds and mice and rats and I try to just constantly be mixing it up for their own benefit. This particular female will eat anything. Whatever I give her, she, she takes it. No, absolutely not a finicky animal whatsoever. But sometimes as wild caught animals, these definitely have a preference for birds. They spend a lot of their time way up very very high in the treetops like 20 meters i was reading they go way 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 high up into the treetops and uh avian prey of course and um rodents as well and she's pretty big so i'll usually give her like two or three of those at a time or i'll mix it up a couple of different um, types of food per meal i feed her basically just once a week so babies of Blanding's tree snakes are unusually large and they are some of the most beautiful babies out of all the Boiga or Toxicodryas. You could say they are this beautiful light pastel gray color with jet black bands and that will change over time. Obviously the females will slowly turn into what you see here and the males will get almost jet black. They are very defensive as babies and they're very happy to do their defensive displays and gape but uh, they actually do pretty well and because they gape like that they're easy to assist feed if they're not feeding on their own and here at dm exotics we are prepared to start a blanding eye factory 
starting next year with multiple animals, so stay tuned for that. So that's about it for today's video, you guys. Toxicodryas blanding eye or Boiga blanding eye, whatever you prefer to call them. If you'd like to see more of these particular animals, put it in the comments below. Let me know. I have more coming. I have some other adults. I really ideally would like to show you guys the males because they're almost black in color. Pretty cool looking. And I'm sure among the group of animals that are coming soon, we're going to get a lot of really interesting gapes and threat displays. It's kind of menacing. And I don't like to stress my animals out, but it's pretty unique and it's pretty cool. But anyway, uh, just to wrap the video with that, uh, if you want to see more, let me know. And next weekend, we are doing a small expo locally here at Costa Mesa. So the video that you guys are going to get next weekend is going to be on Sunday because it's like our normal expo schedule. So we'll give you a look at the expo and let you kind of see what's going on. For my Patreon people, we are going to do a live stream here pretty soon. Please send me private messages either through Patreon or through Discord. Let me know some topics what you guys want to discuss. I'm open for anything. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And that is about it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next one. Take care.